If you're thinking about buying a flat as a buy to let property investment, there's a few things that you should definitely find out before you complete your purchase. And these are pretty simple things and should be available as information. If people don't wanna tell you this information, then I would get suspicious. But the first thing you can find out is if any work is planned or proposed by the freeholder or by the managing agent for the property, the building, the surrounding sites, the communal areas that you might be financially liable for as a leaseholder. And I'm gonna give you an example. A friend of mine bought a flat in a block and then a little while down the line, they sent him an invoice for five grand because they had planned and already had agreed to re-tarmac the car park. And he didn't know about that. He wasn't expecting that cost, but he had to pay out five grand, which if he'd have known about it before, it might have changed his investment. The second thing to find out is the forecasted service charge. Now, a good managing agent or a good freeholder should be able to tell you what the forecast is for the next year's service charge. At minimum, they should be able to tell you what the current cost of service has been to give you an idea of what you can expect to pay next time round in service charges. Now, bear in mind, service charges are not fixed after a year. So, so you might have a service charge that you pay for the year and then the next year they recalculate it. How much did it cost us to service and maintain this entire building? And that's what you, they should be able to tell you that information quite easily. Another thing to check is any restrictions on the lease itself. Now your solicitor should be able to tell you this, but sometimes they put so much information in their analysis of a lease, you should really ask specific things to you. So if you're gonna buy this flat as a buy to let property, then ask about if there are any restrictions for letting the property out. Believe it or not, there are some leases that say you cannot let this property out. There are some, I've seen examples of restrictions for having pets in the building or letting the property as a holiday let or a short term let. You just need to make sure that your lease, the lease on the property that you're buying allows you to do what you want to do with it. Next thing, find out how much money there is in the sink fund and does it cover any proposed works? Is it enough to cover everything that's going on in this building, all of the maintenance, all the repairs, all of the, the new stuff they're adding and all of those sorts of things? You need to check that there is enough money in that fund in order to cover the proposed works. The next thing is with ground rent. You need to check to see if the ground rent is a fixed amount or whether it's subject to any increases or changes. I don't know if you've seen in the news, but there's a big uproar about ground rents because there are some cowboy freeholders that build into leases things like the ground rent doubles every five years or 10 years or whatever it may be. And that just compounds and compounds. If you were to live in a property for 50 years and it's compounding and compounding and compounding its ground rent, then at the end of your time living in that property, it's gonna be costing you an absolute fortune. So just check the ground rent to make sure it's either a fixed amount or it's not gonna keep increasing uh, over time. Next one is an obvious one, but check the cladding of the building. If there is cladding, check that cladding to make sure it's compliant with current standards. These standards are changing. So make sure that they are checked to ensure that the, that the uh, current cladding is compliant Otherwise you might find that is a cost down the line that all the leaseholders have to com contribute towards. The next thing is to find out categorically what parts of the building you are liable for. Now there are different scenarios, different instances where sometimes the, the freeholder looks after windows, sometimes the leaseholder does. Sometimes freeholder looks after this part of the building, other times leaseholders do, and so on and so on. So you just need to check what parts of the building are you liable for? And all of this is gonna come at cost. So what we're trying to do really is just work out what the actual investment is gonna be, what the actual costs are going to be with this flat. Now granted, flats do come normally with a bit more liability, a bit more cost than, than houses, but that's why you can quite often pick flats up for cheaper. And as long as you only take profit into account when you're buying a flat, then you will calculate your yield accurately. And that's just your rent, your incoming rent, minus all the costs mortgage insurance as normal, but also your service charge, ground rent, any maintenance costs and things like that. So you need to make sure that the profit coming in 
is of an amount that gives you the required yield. So if you're able to make 10% per year from a house and you can't make 10% per year from a flat because of all the additional costs, don't buy it, buy a house unless you really, really, really want a flat, but you should be able to see the comparison as well. Normally it does balance out unless you're overpaying for a flat. Normally it balances out in, if you are buying a flat, you should have a higher rent against the uh, expenditure than you would with a house. And it takes into account the additional costs such as service charge and all those sorts of things. So check all those things, find out if any works are planned that you're liable for, find out forecasted service charge or at least the current year's service charge, any restrictions on the lease, letting, pets, holiday lets, things like that. How much is in the sink fund? Does it cover any proposed works? Find out the situation with the ground rent. Is it fixed? Is it variable? Is it gonna increase? What's the situation there? The cladding on the building must be compliant. This is gonna be a big one must be compliant cladding for sure. What parts of the building are you liable for? And only work on profit. Don't look at rental income versus um, purchase cost. It's the wrong way to calculate yield. You work on profit coming in versus the cash that you've spent. That's it. So hopefully that helps. Good luck buying your flats. Speak to you later.